Hey, Gina, how's it going? Going great. Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for doing this again um, after this morning. Um, I know you guys just practiced. Uh, can you give any sort of update on where Nika's at, if she's what she's able to do in practice, if anything at all, and and what her status is going in tomorrow? Uh, there's no change in her status. So I don't anticipate her playing tomorrow. Is uh, I don't know if you can answer this at this point, but if if you guys were to win tomorrow, would she potentially be able to play later in the tournament, or is she shut down for potentially? Well, that's a you know, that's a week away, so a lot can change in a week. So it's hard to say right now how much progress you can make in a week, but as far as tomorrow is concerned, no. Gino, a similar question with Shay. Are you expecting Shay back at all for any point of part of this tournament? And what has she been doing while while at home? Has she been, you know, part of the scout or planning or any of that? Uh, no, Shay's not going to be able to get back in. Uh, that's NCAA policy that anyone who uh, left the bubble will not be able to get back in. So there's really not much you can do. You know, I'm. Um, you know, other than stay connected and stay in touch, there's really, there's really not a whole lot. Um, you know, you can watch practice or watch shoot around or whatever the case may be. But other than that, there's really not a whole lot you can do. Y'all better have more questions than that. Do you know um, that game? I, I know um, you you've said this before in your career that uh, the losses kind of stick in your in your head more than the wins. Um, that that game last year against Baylor, um, you said that you weren't up to their level after the game. I mean, so much has changed since then. But has that kind of stuck in your mind a little bit and made you anxious to play them again? Um. Uh, not, not necessarily, not any more than anyone else. I mean, um, you know, we, we obviously weren't good enough to beat uh, Baylor last year. We weren't good enough to beat South Carolina last year. We weren't good enough to beat Oregon last year. Um, and, and obviously that was, that was evident, you know, um, that didn't make me any more or less uh, anxious to play any of those schools this year. You know, they have different teams. We have different teams. So uh, it really different circumstances. It's, I, I just can't believe that we're playing Baylor in, in the, uh, in, in the final eight, if we're a number one seed, if we're a number one seed and supposedly we were the number two, number one, you mean to tell me Baylor's number seven? So somebody got that wrong. They asked me. And if I was them, maybe, Maybe they're excited. Maybe they're glad they weren't a number one and they get to play us because they think they can handle us pretty easily. I don't know. I just don't know how a team that good and it's done all that can be, if things are supposedly what they say they are, seated seventh. You watch the tournament, doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> you know, just wanted to ask what it was like being back with your team, being able to coach on the bench yesterday as opposed to, to watching from home and, and kind of what that was like getting back into that routine after they'd been with CD and Jamel. Uh, 
pretty seamless, really. I mean, I, I, I really kind of let them do what they've been doing uh, because they had a pretty good routine going. You know, um, this is all about routine here. You know, what time you wake up, what time you eat, you know, what time you test, what time you, you know, you get to go to practice. So it's all about the same thing, just a different day. And, um, you know, I just kind of got in line and followed the routine. Uh, not much changed in terms of our approach and what we're doing. Um, you know, I watch practices from home. So we just tried to keep the same routine. I watch shoot around. We try to keep the same routine. So wasn't that, hasn't been that difficult. To, to follow up, you had talked about the routine just becoming kind of monotonous before you guys got into the bubble. How have you seen your players handling that now that uh, you're some time into it? And you've kind of come from the outside to, to come in to see where they are. Well, I think, I think they've handled it amazingly well. I mean, they want to play really bad. So they'll put up on anything to play. Uh, but some of the some of the protocols are absolutely beyond ridiculous. I have to say, you know, I mean, you got to wait an hour to go down the elevator because only four people are allowed in the elevator at the same time. Meanwhile, four of the same team that just spent the last 45 minutes upstairs together. It's kind of bizarre, right? We were just all at practice together. And now only four of us can go in the elevator at the same time. That's just one. Two, you can't go outside because you can only walk around the block. So, you know, say, hey, how about we make time for the team? You know, every team can schedule a time to go sit out. You know, they got this really nice pool deck where you can just sit and get some sun. No. Okay. You're, you're, you're actually being held hostage just so you can play basketball. And I think the kids have handled it incredibly well. But it's, so, it's just unusual. Somebody knocks on your door in the morning, food's ready, and they, you think, well, oh, we're going to dinner, or we're going to go grab some food. And you open the door, and there's food sitting on the floor. Like I said, you're like, uh, you know, Lassie. Come here, boy. I'm surprised they haven't put a bowl of water out there yet. Gino, what have you thought of your sophomores so far coming off the bench, their quality of play in this NCAA tournament? Uh, I think pretty good. I think pretty good. I think they've both given us some good minutes. Um, you know, you – you're not expecting the, either of those two to come in and win a game for us, although that that might happen, you know. You just want them to come in and contribute and have an impact somehow, a positive impact on the game. And I think they both have in their own way. Um, and we may need we, we may need them even more tomorrow night. You know, tomorrow night's a tough, tough matchup, no matter how you look at mm -hmm. it. You can never have enough bodies when you're playing when you're playing Baylor. What makes Baylor's defense so good, Gino? How different is it from what you try to do defensively? Um, not that much different. I mean, they're long, they're athletic, they're physical. Um, you know, they they they. They really try to intimidate you and, and, and impose their will on you defensively. They rebound the ball, you know. They get involved, you know, with their hands, with their feet, their arms. They're, they're, they're a very athletic, very, very physically intimidating team. 
I don't know that anybody would ever call us that. They remind me of when we had Tina and Maya and Renee, Kalina, you know, that crew back then. You know, let me ask you about Melissa. Who, she was 11 for 11 yesterday, and they weren't all layups. Um, how do you handle a kid that big who can shoot from basically anywhere? And um, who guards her? Or do you end up going zone, or what do you do? I think you try a little bit of everything, you know. Obviously, you know, as you found out with Caitlin Clark yesterday, you know, you, a really good player, you're not going to go out there and go, oh, you know all the stuff that she did yesterday? We're not going to let her do any of that stuff. That's nonsense. You know, good players are going to do what they're going to do. You just got to hope that you make it a little more difficult on them than it normally is. But she's going to get the same shot she got yesterday. I hope she doesn't go 11 for 11, but, you know, she's become a really, really good basketball player. I remember seeing her in high school and, you know, I thought, wow, this kid's got a ton of potential. And she's become a really, really good basketball player. Really skilled and real aggressive and tough. Um, I mean, I, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a big kid in the country that is as versatile as she is. Hey, Gina, just to kind of go off the um, COVID protocols and whatnot, I mean, I, I understand you changed hotels. Was that complicated at all? And how is the food actually now that you've been we in didn't the change hotels. You didn't? No. Okay. I know, I know Jeff Wall said he, he did. Yeah, it was. But, some teams, you know, some teams had changed hotels because they brought all 16 of the Sweet 16 teams into one hotel. But we were already in that hotel. Oh, okay. So we didn't have to change. Hey, look, there's no, there's no shortage of food. If anybody tells you there's a shortage of food, you're crazy. There's food every time you turn around. Is it good? I mean, tonight at six o'clock or six thirty under normal circumstances, I wouldn't be sitting in a food room eating food out of a box. <laughs> but things are not normal. Nothing's normal. So there's no shortage of food. And I've lost my taste and smell, so what do I care what it, what it tastes like? Sure. I think the food has great texture, though. <laughs> And you know what? I think your mind tricks you too. I was telling somebody, I don't know if I said this before, but when I look at something and I taste it, I go, wow, yeah, that tastes really good. Because in my mind, you know, I'm tasting a piece of bacon or something. So it's supposed to, so I'm tasting bacon, even though I can't taste it. Eric? Now you know how the media feels, Gino, at these events. We're all eating out of boxes all the time. <laughs> uh, can, can you talk about the fans? And during the regular season, it's one thing to play without them, but is tomorrow night a game Will you miss your fans, you know, really for the first time during all this? Really miss them? Well, I don't know what the, the, uh, the capacity is tomorrow or supposed to be or can be. I don't know how many tickets they have out. So whatever 17% is, you know, you could hear them yesterday for sure. Um, and we had some fans here yesterday for sure. And I think, I think the kids on both teams will appreciate that. You know, they have family members that were able to come down. Some of the kids do anyway. So I think that's been, that's been a, a big plus. Thanks. Alexa. Did you know, um, you know, when we think of, about this Baylor team, they're obviously reigning national champions. And we asked him about this 
earlier when we talked with her and she said, well, it was really only Dee Dee Richards who was getting significant time on that team. And I'm just curious when you look at them, do they look like an experienced team to you, even if maybe a lot of those pieces from that national championship team have left? And how do you think the just, I guess, role of experience is going to play out with your team being younger and they having a few more experienced pieces? Um, yeah, I mean, I think experience always pays off. Um, so, you know, they've got, you know, they've got a couple of the classmen. I don't, last time I looked, I mean, I don't think they play a lot of freshmen. Um, uh, I don't think they play a ton of sophomores either. You know, I, they, they, they do mostly have, you know, junior seniors and grad students. So that experience, it's, it's worth something. I mean, it's, um, uh, you know, if you, if you've played a lot of basketball, then obviously you have a, a little bit of an advantage over, um, you know, someone who hasn't played as much. I mean, if Leah Edwards is guarding Melissa Smith, I mean, that's a, you know, that's an older kid versus a younger kid. If Dee Dee Richards is playing against Paige Beckers, that's, you know, a really experienced player against a, a freshman. So there is something to be said for that, no question. We'll go to Vicki to wrap it up. Hey, Gino, I was just wondering, um, do, do, you, do you ever um, yell at Paige like yesterday when she patted you on the butt? Is there like, I know you guys have a good relationship and everything, but is there ever a day where you just like make a run at practice for a half an hour, you know, like you used to in the old days or do you, is it is it just a pretty like fun fun relationship or do you do you get mad at her ever? Do I get mad at her ever? Um, every day. I mean, you should probably ask me when am I not mad at her? I was giving I was giving her a hard time today. I was mad at her today. You know, I read in the media afterwards yesterday. I, I was so excited to play that game, you know. I you know, I loved you know, I love the matchup. I was so excited for the matchup, their team against our team. You know, a lot of people were going to be watching on TV. You know, I, I was just really, really excited. I said, really? That's the most exciting I've ever seen a person in a coma be in the first quarter. I said, I hope if something bad ever happens to me and I'm in a coma, that I look that excited. I, so I get mad at her about a lot of things. And as you can see, it really doesn't matter because it goes in one ear and out the other. But at least I feel good about it. I feel better. I feel better. 